the consumer has increased from about 62% to 72%. Right? Consumer spending has taken over and savings has and capital spending has has uh, has gone down. So this is really the, the concern as we look at the third quarter, fourth quarter into 2009, as you're going to see a negative in terms of personal consumption. We have already over the last year seen an erosion in employment, both in the United States uh, and in California. Here's a look at uh, Santa Clara that just went negative. Um, so only slightly, this isn't looking like 01 and 02 at all, but again, it's being uh, pulled in by the same forces that are affecting the entire uh, state. Uh, here's a look at uh, unemployment in, in Santa Clara compared to the state as a whole, so you're actually doing, um, doing better there. The unemployment rate, about 6.5%. There's another way of just looking at the, the downturn. Um, August 07 to August 08, the state as a whole is down 2.9% in terms of jobs. And here's the breakout of September compared to uh, a year ago for, um, for the Bay Area and San Jose actually going against trend um, up a little bit. So again, my, my kudos to all of you. Uh, this is a, a breakout of jobs by category. If you look at construction, finance, insurance, real estate, rental, and leasing, 07, 08, and projected for 09. Those are the sectors, obviously, that are contracting the growth areas, education, professional services, healthcare, and utilities. Uh, retail sales, this was the number that freaked the market out about two, I don't know what it is every day, it's something, but about two weeks ago. Oh, I did, oh my gosh, I'm really sorry, because I, I have, a. I have an updated slide that I updated this morning and I did uh, cut and paste it in here. Um, this index in October was 38. It has not been 38 ever. They started calculating the Consumer Confidence Index in 1969. So that's pretty, pretty remarkable. Um, the CPI, the, the um, uh, relief we've seen in the commodities market, particularly in oil, I think is looking uh, really good. The, the core rate of inflation that takes out food and energy has been very, um, very well behaved. It's, it's energy that's really been, been the problem. So I don't think this is going to constrain any, any stimulus package going forward. And really, 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 the critical concern is stabilizing the financial system and getting liquidity moving again. And um, it's, I think it's starting to happen. You know, we, we met um, at CAR with the uh, more, uh, largest uh, brokerages in Southern California yesterday and kind of took a poll in terms of the availability of funds. And it seemed to be like things weren't like easy, but they were getting loans closed. So that was, um, that was encouraging and I hope that's what you're uh, you're experiencing. So let me just say that our forecast is based on negative GDP growth in the first half of 2009 and positive GDP growth in the second half based on return to some semblance of financial market stability and the impact of any stimulus package that comes down the pike. If that doesn't happen, we're going to have to redo things because the biggest kind of caveat is not the growth in sales at the moderate and low end where you've got distressed properties that are just amazing deals right now. It's really the high end and it's really the availability of jumbo financing. We really haven't seen much uh, price compression at the high end at all uh, in California yet. But if we start to see difficulty in getting financing, and or if we go into a situation where the economy really takes a tumble, I think we're going to have all, you know, all categories of the market are going to get impacted because the worst thing for any market is uncertainty. You can deal with good news, eventually you get out of denial and deal with bad news, but if you just don't know what's happening, you're going to hunker down and wait to get through it. And that's why you guys are in a great position to use data to talk to your clients and kind of calm things down. Because I don't know about you, but I feel better when I kind of see where we are, what past cycles were like, and so on and so forth. Read the paper. 
I, I go to these meetings and they say, like, don't read the paper. You gotta read the paper because your clients are reading the paper, but you need to do that so you can provide a longer term perspective or a neighborhood perspective or an investor perspective or whatever that might be. So anyway, our, our overall forecast, again, I've already described it, slow down in the first half, return to some semblance of growth um, in the second half in terms of California, same difference, but the jobs picture is a little bit more negative in California because we had more eggs uh, in the real estate basket. And so we're looking at about a similar increase in sales in 2009, focused at the moderate and low end and de-stressed properties. And we're gonna get more of it coming on and people are there ready to absorb them. It's just gonna take some time. And because of that, we're still gonna see erosion in the statewide median home price with the biggest hit having taken place in, um, in 2008. So that's what we're seeing right now. Obviously, things are changing, um, changing daily, and we're watching the kind of the underlying strength of the economy very, very closely. Market opportunities, I think, are really clear. De-stress sales, qualified first-time home buyers. Be aware of the Fannie Freddie limits. Uh, we may not have. I mean, I assume that we're going to go down, uh, go down in January, but we're trying to keep that 729 and make it permanent. So go to our website, read the paper, and be. Um, uh, be on top of that, the international market and investors. Investors are going into some of these communities and buying 20 and 30 properties, again, believe it or not, to hold, to rent out. In many areas right now, if you do a buy rent analysis, it's cheaper to buy. So those are, are the kind of demographics we need to kind of look at. Okay, I just have a little bit more to uh, kind of share with you. We did a survey earlier this year of first-time home buyers. I wanted to talk to people that are actually in the market and find out what the scoop was. Like, why are you in the market? So we did telephone surveys. We talked to 500 buyers. And here's who they were. They were about 35 years old. They were a little bit more married, but not really. You know, pretty evenly, evenly balanced there. Um, uh, income was between, I wish they put the median on this, but you can see it's between probably around 100,000. Uh, average price about 400,000, median about 365. 49% of them purchased something that you might have sold them, an existing single family home. 51% are buying a condo. Again, affordability is still key for this group. 35% townhome. 13% of all the homes sold were de-stressed, but 22% of the single family detached were some kind of distress. They spent about six months looking before finding a home. About 21% were three months or less, about 8% were over a year, but it's still taking time. Primary reason for buying, number one answer was price decreases allowed us to buy or tired of renting. And then we specifically asked what role did the market play and two thirds of them said, wow, prices, 39% said lower interest rates, those, those really got people in. How long did you plan to stay? I thought that was, this was interesting, it's about three and a half years. Um, and I think they, first time buyers tend to stay in their homes longer than that. So it was interesting that their expectations were kind of for a, for a shorter stay. Okay, median. An average down payment was 15%. Only 8% said they put 5% down, right? FHA is 3%, so they would fall into there. I guarantee you two years ago when you saw that in the other